So before we go on, I, I'd like to uh, some, uh, give you some correction of numbers of this preprint number, which is no, this is my uh, paper. But. And uh, also I would like to recommend one more reference, this textbook of quantum information, but if you are interested in entanglement measures, especially entanglement measures for mixed state, I recommend this textbook about geometry of quantum state is Cambridge Press. Okay, but uh, we have some, one more thing to do, uh, just continuation of my previous uh, lecture. So this is about the uh, entanglement measure for mixed state. So I explained that entanglement measure for pure state, we can use von Neumann entropy, but for mixed state, situation is very complicated. But nevertheless, we, we have some definition of entanglement measure for mixed state. I, I give some definition of entanglement measure. So we write it, we are talking about bipartite system AB. So we are interested in entanglement between A and B. And in general, this is no longer pure state, this is a mixed state. But uh, there are minimum amount of conditions, minimum condition which this entanglement measure should satisfy. First one is a simple. So this low AB is always positive, uh, non-negative, right? This is the entanglement measure, so it should be. But the more strong one is if low AB is zero somehow, then this is equivalent to the statement that AB is separable. So this is the definition of entanglement for mixed state. And the second one is uh, when low AB is pure. Of course, we, we should get von Neumann entropy. S A and it equals S B. This standard entanglement entropy. And third one <coughs> is a, this is quite important, and this is something I, I didn't explain when I talked about LOCC. That's actually this is a very important part of LOCC. LOCC is something a kind of f which we can do in an experiment. And the entanglement is something that's very important, some some resource. And such a number of resources should not increase. So this means that E rho AB monotonically decreasing. And I rho CC. <coughs> this is a very basic properties. So any action which we can do freely, freely we can act is breaks uh, entanglement. Some, something, this is something called decoherence. But entanglement is easy to break. If this operation increases entanglement, so this is not interesting. And we are interested in the special quantity which we can call entanglement that is very, somehow we have to protect. And the first one is a continuity. There's some kind of continuous. That means this quantity, even when we change rho AB, little bit, infinitesimally small, then this quantity also changes infinitesimally. So this is called continuity. I'm not going to write this property. But for example, Hondheim entropy satisfies continuity, but we know Renyi entropy don't satisfy this property. So that way, already at that point, von Neumann entropy is something very good, but compared with uh, Renyi entropy, convex, it's a convexity, convex property. So this means that if we are mixed, if we have mixed two density matrix, rho and sigma, <coughs> this is always smaller than uh, each of them. So e lambda times rho, one minus rho, one lambda e, e sigma. <coughs> so if we mix the system, then that breaks entanglement. Actually, if we think about entropy, von Neumann entropy, this is opposite, minus rho log rho. This is actually concave. So this is a quite usual standard of idea of entropy. If you, if you mix two different gas, for example, the entropy increases, right? This is second like second law. So this is this kind of concavity is missing here because entanglement is something very precious thing. It's like sometimes we call it like just a unit of money. 
right? So, and if we do something, always we lose money. So this is a basic idea. So and if we combine these two systems, also entanglement decreases. This is also similar. So if we do some action, physically accessible action, they're always decreasing. So these are all requirements of the entanglement measure. Continuity, if we change density matrix slightly, this quantity also changes slightly. So there are some more mathematical bound which we can formulate. And uh, not just continuous. If we, this is F, yes. So we can find some example where a small change gives a very large entropy. So that, that's the reason von Neumann entropy is very special. And also, the previous arguments which I gave here about the LOCC, reversibility of LOCC and that defines ent entropy is only singles out von Neumann entropy. And Lenny entropy is nothing appears in that context. And then, so I'd like to mention one theorem that proved by information theorist. If this one to five are satisfied, Then we can show that always this guy is sits in the following range. So this is ED is something called uh, already we define some de distillation entanglement distribution. How many EPR pairs we can extract from the system by LOCC? Entanglement uh, <coughs> measure, entanglement measure. So this is AB. Oh, entropy is opposite sign, always. Yeah, but, but he already, this is not allowed because we say this is a good measure of entanglement only when this is a pure state. If we, so let's assume this is a pure state, but already this becomes mixed state. So it's consistent. So uh, for pure state, uh, within pure state, uh, I mean, system, we cannot do this kind of action. Uh, yes. <coughs> and so the idea, so point is that I a little bit mentioned this, but uh, so we have two, two measure, obvious measure, entanglement cost and distribution. This is a many, uh, uh, maximum number of EPR pairs which we can extract. And this is a minimum number of EPR pairs we have to prepare to create some state we are interested in, but always this kind of measure sit between this. There is a such a theorem. <laughs> so we can think this is a kind of upper bound and uh, sorry, upper bound and lower bound. But this is some subtle issue. So this is, a, I think for, for our purpose, we, we don't need to care, but this is a little bit different from this guy. And uh, we take some other limit, but you might think it's like also Surprising. So, so if we actually this in general, this kind of entanglement measure don't satisfy additivity. Additivity means just if we, you know, if we multiply to density matrix, I naively we expect something like this. But this is not not always true. And uh, but uh, we, we can define <coughs> because of that. If we take a n copy of the system, it it not just gives n times the one copy result. So and to regulate the result, we often people introduce this kind of regularity, something called regularization or asymptotic limit. So once we define these quantities, there are several terms that always such a measure sit in between. <coughs> so and this is a story of mixed so state uh, entanglement engine. And uh, there are many examples, but maybe also I asked during the break time, so I want to give one example. But I will come up, uh, come to another example, but not exactly entanglement measure. But here I'm talking about entanglement measure. Squashed entanglement. Oh, sorry, eh? uh, So this is a distillation. So how many EPR pairs you can extract from given system? Yeah, this is a, yeah, 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 that's right. And uh, the best measure, uh, as far as we see, so I think we, there is a best measure, but no, this is just one measure which satisfies this condition, right, with more nice, um, more uh, sophisticated constraints. Actually, this guy is satisfied. But you can think about other measures, but uh, let, let me take a 
most beautiful one, which is called squashed entanglement. So this is this defines, let's call this is SQ. ESQ not visible here. So this guy is defined by infinite. These are kind of sort of minima, but sometimes they don't exist minima in the background. Ah, so, okay, sorry. Maybe I, I just write it in the, yeah, so it's, it comes. So let me write squashed entanglement from AB is infinite, half of something called conditional mutual information. So this is assuming some C, C event, then we talk about the mutual information. I already defined this. But here idea is we start with row AB, we already always input is row AB, but we can extend, extend the Hilbert space and define some density matrix ABC. C is orbitary, C is just auxiliary Hilbert space. And this is also equal to state, and if we trace that C, then we should go back to row AB. And this, so this is a definition, but uh, of course, we have to explain, but this is just a, this guy, process BC and ABC and C. So if we ignore C, right, this is a mutual information. Mutual information is defined as A plus SB minus SB. This is a kind of correlation measure, SAB. This is some generalization of that. And we put the extra space and then take a minimization of all possible choice, this choice. So this is a squash then time. But obviously, uh, we notice this is very difficult to compute. How do, how, so we take an orbitary state and take, we have to take a minimization. So this is a real serious problem. But this kind of definition is quite good that we can introduce, we can prove many inequalities like this. So this is obvious. Because if a particular choose C is just trivial, then this becomes just mutual information and should be bounded by half of mutual information. And half of mutual information, if the total system is pure, right, this is Banshee, and SA equals SB, so two times entropy, so this is the same as entropy. So for pure state, this is just reduced to standard measure as we can see. But always, this kind of thing appears. So I'm going to discuss some baby version of this minimum, and we'll discuss what is a holographic dual we can think of. This is coming probably tomorrow. Not probably not today. Um, okay, so these are the story of mixed state entanglement measure. And I would like to go back to our original topic that uh, to understand some ADS safety from quantum information viewpoint. So <coughs> before that, we have to define entanglement entropy in quantum field theory. But this is uh, easy if we, if we remember this kind of spin system and we can take a continuous limit, then we get some, for example, criticalizing model, we can take a, a continuous limit by taking cutoff scales to zero, then we get some conformal field theory. It's like adding Ising model CFT, which is minor non-referion CFT. So that way, we can imagine, we start with some quantum many body system, that means a lot of spins. Let's assume spin, or more generally, some lattice site, or lattice site. And always we need to specify cutoff scale. So that's uh, this lattice constant is, let's call it epsilon, it's a lattice constant. Infinitesimal distance between two different lattices. And then we introduce uh, this decomposition of Hilbert space. Maybe we can just call this is A. The other part is B. And then total Hilbert space is like this, all spin is factorized into HA times HB and continuum limit. And take So sometimes this is subtle because we have to worry about boundary conditions, but in this talk I don't uh, care about it. And the example which we gonna explain here is not affected by such a subtle so what I mean is like if we take a continuum limit, so region A is here and the other region is B. 
right? And this is always time, so let's fix time, right? In time-dependent system, entanglement entropy also depends on the time. So we, we have to fix time, t equals zero, let's say. And then we pick up some region, A, like this. And let's call this boundary of A just around A, usually partial A. So the, once we specify this boundary of A, or decomposition A and B, this is the same as the boundary of B in this setup. Then we have this separation, decomposition of Hilbert space, and uh, we can define entanglement entropy. Say the same definition. <coughs> and this way we can define entanglement entropy is quantum field theory. So this is a basic uh, framework which we work with, and I also give some risk calculation of this entropy for several cases. So now I'm focusing on special conformal field theory, namely conformal field theory, because that's directly related to ADS safety. <coughs> now we would like first we need to introduce the familiar method of calculating entanglement entropy. So this is a new section, which is like entanglement entropy in CFTs. <coughs> and the first thing we have to explain is the so-called replica method. This is a one way to calculate entanglement entropy in quantum field theory. This is not the only one, but this is very powerful one. In most of the cases we use this method. And uh, so the idea is to just go back to the definition, but let us remember that anyway, we have some linear entropy. So even though we are interested in equal one limit, still it's good to look at this quantity because this is just power. There are no logarithmic term appears. It's maybe easier to calculate. And indeed that's true. And, but this is not true for holographic case. Holographic case n equal one, low log row is the easiest to compute. But somehow field theory side in this any guy is quite easy to compute. And uh, so we can do it in any dimension, but just for to write pictures in uh, blackboard, let's focus on. I'll come back to higher dimensional case. Focus on but the 2D quantum field theory. Well, but it's a 2D conformal field series. And how we can compute this, let me explain. So we can do, we can compute this in a path integral form. This is sort of some partition function, which I want to explain. So first thing, we have to calculate rho A, but if we remember this is like this, let's assume some, and especially focus on to the CFT ground state. You can easily generalize the excited state. I will come back to this probably tomorrow, but let's focus in first step is just ground state. And then this grad favorable function, and we trace out B, right? So this is the original definition. So first thing to do is to first realize wave function. But in quantum field theory, this is wave function. Wave function. But this is, this we know. This is just pass integral from minus infinity. That gives, uh, it. so this is given by just pass integral to minus infinity to zero. This is a Euclidean time. Euclidean path integral. So that's project down to ground set because we have like this evolution, this is a Hamiltonian and take the NT goes to infinity. Right? Any state, any boundary condition gives ground state. <coughs> so here we read off boundary condition. So that gives a uh, wave function. And uh, so we can do the same thing for other guy. Uh, yeah. 
can do this also. This is the opposite path integral. Because uh, if we combine these two, we have an inner product. So it's path integral to plus infinity to zero. And then we calculate row A, right? Row A. So we can just combine these two guys. So it's path integral from plus infinity to minus infinity. But the point is that we have a region A. So let's take a region A, it to be some interval. So this is a, we are, we are considering non-compact, so infinite line, total system, infinite. Infinite line. And the subsystem A is an interval. So this is a, this is a region A. So then we have region A here. So there are some open cut here, open slit here. And uh, as a region, we pass integral. Because here we press out B. That means we paste each other and pass integrate. So this region is A, and this part is B. So this is a region state schematic. But uh, we have to be careful that we have to divide by normalization, this partition function. Because uh, we know trace of row A is normalized to be one. Right? We know this row A is equal one. And Z is just a partition function. Right? So this is just pass integral to minus infinity to plus infinity. Also, th these guys also should be normalized. But uh, anyway, we're not using so that. Uh, Now we consider some this stress row A to the n power, right? So then this, we can just take a copy of these guys. So cut A, we pass integral as a region, and we have many copies, n copies. So the other, this region is pass integrated. But the important thing is that we have trace and we have multiplication of this matrix. That means we identify this guy upper boundary to row up boundary of the second seat, and this, this guy is other guys, and then, then end up with this guy is identified with the first guy. Okay. This is a trace, taking traces. So then what we get is uh, in some sort of end seated B minus half is cut. So this is N seed. And this is a region A. So that means if once we go around this cut, then we go to second seat and third seat and so on. In some sense, this periodicity is periodicity of this angle is 2 pi n instead of n, 2 pi. So because of that, we say this deficit angle it has a negative deficit angle. The delta is we often write two pi, one minus n. This is negative, but anyway, let's call this deficit angle, negative deficit. So we are talking about such a conical space. <coughs> but anyway, once we have this system, we, we call this is a sigma n, manifold is called sigma n, it's sort of Riemann surface, and then, this quantity is basically same as partition function on this sigma n divided by partition function to the nth power. This is the original one. Okay. So, of course, this is just a path integral, usual path integral flat space. This is we know. This is a non trivial thing. This is something we have to compute. So this is a main uh, issue uh, to compute entanglement. We, we need to compute this partition function. And once we compute and then analytical continue about n, some, maybe sometimes it's not possible, but the most example we can do this. And then once we have analytical expression, we can just take a derivative or, or this guy, this combination. This is the same as derivative about n, and take n goes to one limit, and then we get on the entropy. 
This is called replicatory. <coughs> um, yeah, so, but I would also want to mention that this is, a, this is one way of describing, but you can think this as a, this kind of, this kind of, this, at this point, locally we create something funny, some funny angles, right, deficit angles, but uh, from the viewpoint of, so the, here we have some C, 2D CFT, so let's call CFT, 2D CFT, but we can think about this actually CFT, but it's a multiple copy of CFT to the n power. So we, we just start with the n copy of CFT, but actually we have to divide, take a O before more precisely about this uh, cyclic group, because which we switch, one seat goes to second seat and so on, because this. But there are, so for this n copy of CFT, so, so if we start with original CFT with central charge C, this is as a NC central charge. Then this is just one seat. This one seat with NC central charge CFTs lives there. And then, so what we, we can say is just this region A is like this, and uh, specified by some inserting some twist operator. These guys are twist operator, which creates such a deficit angle. So if so, then we can understand this as a two-point function of twist operator. Let's call it AB. So this is a A. And then in 2D CFT, we, we know this is just a very, so we can calculate this conformal dimension of this guy and we can reproduce the entanglement entropy. <clears throat> this is the one way, this is a quite a standard way to calculate uh, entanglement entropy, like in the original paper by Holzen, Larsen, Rissek, and also Karabrez, Kadi, and many calculations like this. But I, but uh, next to next section, I would like to give uh, another calculation of this exactly same setup and derive conventional result by, but with, from a little bit different method. So at this point, I, I just stopped here. And the, so now I would like to go to the higher dimension, so including, also including two dimensions. So this kind of calculation, this I wrote it a calculation in 2D, two-dimensional language, because the pictures are easy to write, two dimension, but you can imagine this can be done in a higher dimension. We can do replica calculation of higher dimensions. And we can calculate entanglement entropy even in higher dimension. I, I'll do it in the end of this lecture. But uh, also, historically, people do this calculation in a numerical way, just discretizing free scalar into lattices, like Sredoniki and Bomberi, so such a quite pioneering paper. They did analysis in the numerically. And in the end, they find some basic property called area law, which is very, very important. And I just first state this statement. And uh, so now, well, probably we can say this way. Consider d plus one dimensional quantum field theory, relativistic quantum field theory with a fixed point. So in a ultraviolet limit, it's a kind of conformal environment. But the infrared, of course, we can have mass gap and so on. UV fixed point. If we don't have a UV fixed point, then uh, actually we have to be modify the result. <coughs> so we have assume some UV fixed point. And anyway, this is quantum field theory. So entanglement entropy, this is an infinite degree of freedom. Infinite. Not necessary. Hmm. It's just some conformal field theory. Huh? Yeah, include frequency. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, so the, it has an infinite degree of freedom. So it, in general, entanglement entropy is UV divergent. So please uh, keep in mind this. So then, generally, so we have to think about how it gets divergent. And there is a basic rule of this divergence. This is called area law. So for this, we again specify subsystem, subsystem A is here, and like this kind of setup already mentioned here. So then we, we non-trivial thing, it's a boundary of A, 
or equal to boundary of B. This is a specified decomposition. So entropy should depend on this boundary of A. And then what people find is this entanglement entropy is divergent, but there is some coefficient times some universal divergence, which is proportional to area of this boundary of A. And we have cutoff scale. Cutoff scale we call the lattice spacing epsilon. So epsilon to some power, but this is a dimension D minus one, so it should be D minus. And some subreading correction. Actually, subreading correction we know, like there are no epsilon D minus two times, assuming uh, A is, round A is smooth, smooth manifold. If A has a cusp like behavior, like we have a like cusp, then this time appears. But uh, let's assume A is smooth, then I mean, second order term up. But anyway, so this part is very important. This part is important. This leading divergence, leading divergence is proportional to area. And this is called area row. <laughs> and and this coefficient, okay, yeah, also mentioned, have to mention this coefficient, what is this coefficient? This is really fixed by theory, depends on the theory. But once we fix particular Lagrangian, this is quite universal. We can, this is true for slightly excited state and so on. So here we have in mind a ground state or some finite energy excited state. So and if we excite a little bit then, the subreading term can change, but the leading divergence doesn't change. And yeah. Hmm. Ah, both, both, both. I will give also analytical explanation later, but uh, hmm. we can do it in analytical. Initially, historically, first thing is that people do it in numerical, but now they do have analytical. Control. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, it depends on epsilon. That's right. So if we change epsilon to two epsilon, then of course this coefficient changes. So it's depend on the, how we regularize theory. Yeah, that's a good point. And so that's a reason. So this time is not in some sense it's not uni I mean, behavior is universal, but we cannot extract universal quantity. So actually, but from subreading time we can extract universal quantity, including central charge and and so on. Yeah, that's, that's a very excellent point. And, okay, yeah, so. And I'd like to mention the meaning, uh, importance of this area law. So one may think this is quite general, but uh, if we look at this more general lattice system, so actually the most states satisfy something of volume law. So entanglement entropy is actually proportional to volume. Only limited number of state satisfied area law. I think major is probably zero, but uh, write it this way. And quantum field theory state, ground state and slightly excited state, UFT state, is live there. If we really excite our quite a lot, like if we excite the quantum field theory up to this cutoff scale, then it's really going to change into volume, volume law region. So this is the area law. And this is an area law is related to local Hamiltonian. Not necessarily, but uh, there are theorems that if you have a gap, mass gap, and if you have a local Hamiltonian, always area law follows. This is proven, uh, rigorously proven in two dimensions. So unfortunately, there are no general proof for higher dimension, but this is something we, we understand from holography, combining holography and other free field calculation and, and many other known results. But it's, anyway, so we can capture such a local or non-local nature of Hamiltonian, and we, if we consider such ground states, this area row or volume row. So if volume row corresponds to non-local Hamiltonian, basically. But there are some small, ex exception, so we have to be careful, but roughly speaking, this is what we have. And, but there are some exceptions. 
on this area. No? So actually, this is a main target of here. So 2D, so here, we are generally talk about this higher dimension, including higher dimension. Higher dimension or two dimension. But if you think about especially two dimensional CFT, then and if we have a mass gap, as I told you, so this is still hollow. Area, area row, just very simple. Two dimension, just one dimension space. So area row means just the subsystem A, then area is just two, two points, just number of points. This is two points, and if you have a, A is disconnected like this, four points, four times the result, this is area row. But uh, if you think a uh, massless limit, conform and theory, so this entanglement entropy is logarithmically uh, diverges. So this, I will, I will derive this just soon later, but just like result, like this famous result. And with some constant is again, not, I mean, not because you can change epsilon, right? Then still you can change the constant. But I do, just don't, know, don't want to write it because it's not universal. But this coefficient of log is universal. But anyways, but this logarithmic scaling is surprising if we think about this area law. And we say, people say this, is, this violates area law. And this violation only happens in 2D CFT. There are no such a violation in higher dimension. But this also included somehow. You can take d equal one limit, right, epsilon to the zeroth power. Sometimes this changes the logarithmic. So it's not so surprising. Yes? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, that's, that's a related. Uh, you mean holographic description? You mean minimal? You, you said minimal area. Uh. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here it's QA. Oh, okay, but I can give you some intuitive understanding of this. Basically, like we have many many entanglement. It's many different points. But this entanglement gets very strong if they are close to each other. This is usually true for local Hamiltonian, right? Yeah. So and that's the reason. So we just pick up this number of these guys, right? So this is the area. But then maybe in conformal here, it's a little bit subtle because they have long range, you know, entanglement. But nevertheless, this is true for up higher dimension, more than. But two dimension, because of that issue, so some little bit modification happens. Mm -hmm. But in holography, yeah, we have another interpretation that I will explain. And yeah, okay, so yeah, and then so yeah, this is a already mentioned, but this is a number of degree of freedom. That means if we increase a number of fields, then you know, two, twice the number of fields, of course, this coefficient will get factor two that way. It's roughly speaking degree of freedom, but this is not exactly related to central charge and so such a sophisticated quantity, except the two dimensions. And, okay, so then now I'd like to derive this, this guy. This guy means just L is a subsystem A, size of subsystem A, yeah, interval is a length L. <coughs> I'm using a little bit unusual way to derive this. So, so in entanglement entropy in 2D CFT. But anyway, we, we focus on ground state, but once, once we know the ground state, we can act some conformal transformation to get other state, finite temperature state or periodic identification and so on. So let's focus on the simplest case that is just non-compact space and ground state. So we have N seed, Riemann surface, so A, B. And this is a subsystem A, and we have N seat, right? So is this a field theory, quantum field theory? Ah, sorry, conformal field theory. So we can have a conformal invariance. So th let's call this coordinate system Y. Then we do some conformal mapping, which map to the simpler space, just a one seat. So let's call this space is W. Then this map is easy to work out. This is used many area literature of this calculation. Uh, y minus A, Y minus B equal to W to N. So this Nth power kind of changes this 2 pi N periodicity into two, just 2 pi. 
And uh, so A, this point mapped to uh, origin. And uh, B goes to infinity, right? So I cannot write it, infinity. So that means we have, roughly speaking, what we have is like this angle is a 2 pi divided by n. So there are many such a kind of separation, so this decomposition. And uh, one seat, so let's call this seat, is mapped to this wedge. And this guy is, so there are two axes, this guy and this guy is mapped to either of this boundary, this two boundary. And this guy is here, and then going around, then we go this way, and then we end up with this. And then, so, but point is that, so this metric is flat, this is flat. Metric is flat. But this is, after this mapping, this is quite curved space. So we wanted to understand the end contribution of this curved metric to this entanglement entropy. So if we write a metric, so we start with metric is flat, right? dy, dy bar, right? But we can rewrite this in terms of W, W, so we have square and DW, so DW bar, right? So this is highly non-trivial. And we can call this as a wire factor, it's 2 phi, we often write it 2 phi. And if everything is flat space, partition function is trivial, right? There are no entropy, but because of this factor, we get entropy. So we'd like to compute it, but unfortunately in 2D CFT, we know that some powerful rule, powerful result, partition function of 2D conformal fuel theory with some manifold sigma is, and with this metric, let's assume this metric, ds square is exponential to phi dw dw bar, actually written in terms of something called Liouville reaction. So I L phi, is phi is this metric, and Liouville, C 24 pi and square, and this is just normalization we are considering. And this is a kinetic term, and this is a central charge, and mu, this is a kind of Liouville potential. Actually, this term don't play important role, because, because this comes from the UV divergence, just kind of quadratic divergence, and it's good to keep it, but this is not important. Only this term is important in these calculations. And uh, so this term, first term, come from, right? this is an important term, come from trace anomaly, conformal anomaly, wire anomaly. This is just, uh, so we know that energy stress tensor, trace of energy stress tensor has an anomaly in 2D CFT, that's a definition of central charge actually. And uh, this coefficient central charge with this factor up to some standard normalization. R is a rich, rich scalar in the manifold sigma. Sigma. <coughs> we call it curved space. So this takes non trivial value. And this is computed 25, 20, 20, 25. It's like this. This is a just contraction of derivative. And uh, yeah, anyway, so this energy stress tensor is computed by action by taking derivative of metric, right? So then we can integrate this equation and then we get this kinetic term. This is a related to viral anomaly. This guy is just quadratic divergent of this partition function. And then once we know this, then we can use this fact, right? Because we want to just compute, evaluate this partition function. So we just plug this metric, this expressed metric here, and then calculate this entropy. So this we will do here. <coughs> so then we see some appearance of divergence. So we need to regulate divergence. <coughs> and the expressed tree, so this guy, let's write this way, dy, dw square, which is exponential two phi, is given like this, n square b minus a square, and w two n minus one, and w n, it would complicated, but this is true. 
this. And then, in principle, everyone can do this from here. And then, anyway, we write, rewrite this guy. And n, n means, so we are talking about this sigma n. Right? Then we are put n here. <coughs> sigma n is this guy. Right? This guy is sigma n. This guy is sigma n metric. And we do this. A little bit complicated here, but the structure is So we have dw. And some renewable potential term. But this is actually not important because they cancel. Let me just write it here. And minus one, WN, vertical. So this is a full expression. So anyway, we just need to do this integral, right? And the W is just flat space, I mean, just plane. So it should be easy. But there are divergence. And the entanglement entropy, Rainy entropy, so Rainy entropy is computed from this very easily. Oh, sorry, log, we don't need log. So we already exponential of i have here, so log, we don't need log. And i l n minus n times i l one. So this, is some, this is the entropy, the Rainy entropy. So this is something we have to compute. And then uh, divergences. There are three sources of divergences. One is obviously the re where we have crossed A, right? This goes to zero and Y equal. And Y is goes to A. Then W, so W goes to zero, but obviously this is divergent here. So we need a cutoff. And we just simply require, for example, like A, this, is, this value is greater than epsilon. So we have to point that we have to impose cutoff scale in this coordinate, in this coordinate, and this is non-trivially mapped to here, so it's like another different, different cutoff. But uh, we have to specify cutoff here. So then, 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 so yeah, so if we have this, but we can right, plug this condition here. Then we see a, a minus b appears, and w n we have to take uh, n root, and then. This cutoff looks like this, b minus a, one minus n, right? And y, in a similar way, we have cutoff for y goes to b, then w should be less than epsilon, just the opposite power. <coughs> and the third possibility is y goes to infinity, but actually this is not important. So this, in some sense, this IR cutoff, right? This is infinitely extended, so you need some IR cutoff. So for this, we take this way, this is minus a, some new cutoff, y, y infinity. So this is just the size of this space, right? This is, let's call this is a y infinity, right? So we only restrict everything here. Otherwise, integral divergent. But results don't depend on y, y infinity. So this guy is not so important as we will see. Now it's very easy to evaluate. <coughs> uh, okay, so the first case, y goes to a limit, then action, this action is like uh, w square and c 24 pi, this is the usual factor, and one minus n square and w square. And so we can say this is equal to the, uh, so then W, so again, so we use this condition, right? W is epsilon B minus A, N root. So up to this region, this integral is convergent and very easy to see. Ah, this is an important factor. Square and log b minus a epsilon. Okay. This appears because integral like this. Right? So we get this kind of 
integral here. And similarly, we can do the analysis for y goes to b. And I'm not writing details because it's just obvious. Then we find that 12, ah, sorry, I'm sorry, this is minus, so this is minus, sorry, I'm sorry. This is minus. In this case, you get plus. And log, so we get this. And the third case, actually, um, we, even though we try to compute this guy uh, with some integral, and, and, but it turns out this is just proportional to n. <coughs> so this does not contribute. So we can just literally flag this boundaries here, then just so we know this is proportional to n. So we already did done the calculation and just summarize. So we have to sum up this one and two, first contribution and second contribution. And this contribution, this action, new reduction in this curve space, and it looks like this. N, one minus N square, and this row. If come from this sum. <coughs> and then entropy, Rainier entropy, looks like uh, we take, a, uh, we decom divide one minus n, so then we get c and one times, this is a famous result, as derived by Jose Larson Lissick. If you set and equal one, this is von Neumann entropy. He produced the previous formula. This is something here, right? This is something here. <coughs> something we call it, length of subsystem. And here we only talk about divergent piece, so that's the reason we don't know, we don't say anything about final piece, but there are some finite concerns. But this is not universal, because if we change the cutoff scale, then this is somehow changes, so we don't care. So, far. <laughs> so this is a derivation of this previous formula. But the equivalent, we can derive this, you know, in terms of, from this twist operator language. Maybe I just write it here. Usual calculation is like this. We have two, two point function of twist operator, and this gives B minus A, and uh, some dimension, actually, <coughs> sorry, uh, epsilon B minus A, this cutoff scale appears, and two times conformal dimension of this operator. And delta N is, so H is a chiral conformal dimension, left wing, right wing part, so some of this is delta N, and this guy, 12C, uh, n minus n. <coughs> so this just also gives this same result. So this is some where also this known result for conformal dimension twist operator, but even we don't know this, then we can calculate it this way if we know new reduction. But this is essentially equivalent, of course. <coughs> okay. So the remaining thing I would like to explain, finally I just want to explain the calculation of entanglement entropy in free theory, but in higher dimension. Yes, yes. Yes, this is only one. Uh, yes, 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 that, that's actually, but the multiple interval result depends on the theory. So it's because it's like, uh, we get some kind of torus geometry, as you can imagine. So if you have two interval and two C, this is an equivalent torus. It's really depend on the spectrum. So that way, some case we, we know the result, some case we don't know. 
And especially, special case of this Dirac fermion, massless Dirac fermion theory, we can get any result. Even any multiple interval, we get the analytical result. But for even free theory, free bosson theory, we can compute, for example, Rényi entropy for multiple intervals, but we cannot extract, for example, von Neumann entropy. So we cannot take a simple analytical continuation about N because it's, I mean, described by very complicated Ziegler's theta function. Dinas is going up and so on. So even free boson is not true. But for holographic theory, we can quickly find. That's how I will explain. Holographic safety, we can compute it. <coughs> so just sort it. To We are talking about any dimension, but uh, less to restrict uh, free scalar field. Uh, and we can even allow some massive scalar field. Massive, we can take a massless limit, but let's take just massive free scalar in d plus one dimension. I'm going to pi. And the coordinate, we have like coordinate plus one is coordinate x zero at time and x one xd. And so we just use some Euclidean time. <laughs> and we choose the simplest choice of subsystem, namely this let's call this x one direction and time is fixed, tau equals zero. So tau is tau is fixed to be zero. And this is a maybe x2 or other direction, xd direction. So we just cut it into half, half, precisely half, full, half. So the region A is the region, so region A is the x1 is negative, and region B is x1 is positive. This is the simplest choice. And in this case, we can compute entropy analytically. <coughs> so this is A, so A, and this is a B. And it just extends trivially in another direction, x2 and other direction. And we define this volume, so sometimes useful. So that even time direction, we take an integral. And so all direction, we just call v d plus one dimension. And x2 is a very special, right? x1 is very special. So x2 and xd, always we have a zero mode. And this is called d minus one, just volume, right? It's infinite, but just regulate into volume. And then we want to compute this SA. And so one, so we start with just vacuum partition function. So this is just a RD plus one. This, maybe I can write it this RD plus one, this flat space defined here. And just log of partition function. This as usual, you can define the log of determinant, inverse department of this Laplacian. This is because of free, free scalar. And so in a K, this momentum language, like log K square plus M square. And we, we need to put some cutoff. This is important, one over epsilon. Again, always cutoff is epsilon. And the momentum set one over epsilon. But this is quite useful to rely this in terms of uh, showing a parameter. So it's standard. But now integral, of a single parameter S, it has a cutoff, epsilon square. And we have an integral of K, just this guy. All of this we have to integrate over, and S, K square plus M square. <coughs> S is this parameter. Now if we integrate, you get the logarithmic term, but we have cutoff here, but it's correlated with this. <coughs> and then we can easily to, easy to calculate this, this Gaussian integral, and what we find, integral. <coughs> so now we'd like to compute a similar partition function for a replicated space. But the replicated space is, uh, we can do actually analytically, but it's, it involves many complicated 
uh, Bessel function and so on, so I don't want to write it. They are actually simpler way to calculate it, namely this all before method. So we have this. We have rho a to the nth power, right? This is a Riemann surface. So uh, maybe we can do it right this way. So originally two pi n periodicity, but much easier thing to compute is all before. So we can rewrite this in terms of some conical space whose angle is two pi divided to large n. And here we set n equal one, one over a capital N. Then, so this is space is like O before C mod Z N. So we can calculate this. And uh, if this analytical continuation works, uh, it works. But actually this is very subtle. So this works for scalar and the fermion, but it doesn't work simply for higher spin field. So this is quite subtle issue, but anyway, so I'm not going to details. So in this case, we have to think about extra d minus one dimension. But that's a trivial. This direction is always trivial. <laughs> and then very easy to calculate. And so this, but I, we have to explain this all before. This all before, this is Zn all before, and the elements act some coordinate, let's call this coordinate Z. Z is defined by X tau plus Ix1. This is Euclidean time and X1. So Z is rotated by angle to pi over N, uh, N and Z. This is a O before. This is a very simple O before. And then what we find here. So now we wanted to compute log Z, this R2 divided by Z, and it's the same as this guy, and R D minus one. And this is turns out to be D minus one, infinity DS, DS, O pi S, exponential SM square. And so we have to sum over J, this is a projector. Uh, this is, if you are familiar with all before, so this is, so this means just Z, right? N minus one to the N. This is a projector to the G invariant state, right? If the state satisfies G, some state is satisfied invariant condition, this survives under this projection. But other state, all other states project it out. But anyway, so that we can rewrite this way. And this is easy to compute. Right? Actually, this for S is easy to compute. I write it here quickly. <coughs> so this for S is very easy. And uh, this includes J equals this zero mode, but this cancels with this guy. Right? Because we are interested in a quantity like log Z R square Z N, right? Minus times something times one over n and the log of just flat space partition function. This guy. <coughs> and so, and we have a one over n factor, so this completely cancels, j equals zero cancels. So we only are interested in j and z and uh, j equal one to n, and, but this is very easy to calculate. Um, yeah, so this is very easy to calculate for n we are minus one. This is because Torres law GJ in, in terms of zero mode. So this is a K integral. Like we can just write it this way, brand just stand up homework. So, but so this is just a rotating also momentum. So basically what we found is two dimensional momentum invariant, but this is a chromorphic con combination. This guy is chromorphic, so we K the K bar, right? and the exponential two pi i over n k, and uh, it's holomorphic conjugate. <laughs> two pi i n minus and k bar. And uh, it just integrates, it's just very easy. Just uh, we get the sign something. Sign pi j n square, right? 
right? And then, so we know the formula to sum over j in the science. You can find this in uh, any, I mean, kind of mathematical formula book. Then we can sum up, then we get this. And this allows us to finally compute entropy and just write the final result. So, yeah, SA n is one uh, with log of Z, C over ZN, and minus ZR, one over N log of ZR, D plus one, okay. And then entanglement entropy, by taking N goes to one limit, we get, when D is greater than two, we get area law. D minus one, six D minus one, or pi <coughs> two D minus one, times epsilon D minus one. This is a uh, area law divergence. And some other terms. This is order D, D minus three. <coughs> and at D equal one, so we get a special thing, that's logarithmic divergence. Mass appears. So here, mass result, reading term don't depend on mass, but actually here, reading correction actually depend on mass. This logarithmic term depend on mass, because this is the only mass, mass scale, because we have to combine mass scale with cutoff to get the dimensionless quantity. There are no volume here. So it's just point, number of points. So even though this is logarithmic divergence, but this still satisfy area law for when m is non-zero. Because just co this contribution is just come from end points of subsystem A. Num just count the number of these end points. So we, we say this is area law is preserved, but if we take n goes to zero limit, uh, this is a serious problem, and then logarithmic correction of subsystem size appears. So if m equals zero, this, this doesn't make sense, right? But uh, that means we are talking about subsystem A is infinitely large, right? So we decompose space into half, half, so the length is infinite. So, but if we truncate length of A to be some finite size L, then we get uh, three log L over epsilon. So the reason why we have one six is just we have one boundary, right? So we have a system, but we decompose into half, half, right? So only a boundary is one point. But if you have two end points, then you get a three here. And, and if we take continuity, we recover previous issue. But anyway, this is the simplest case we, we, which we can see area law. I expressed it. Yeah, I think I will stop here.